Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Miklos Hajdu. I'm a professor of construction management at the Budapest University of Technology, Hungary. A video recording my presentation is a novel and unusual genre for me, so I apologize for being clumsy. I will do my best. Uh, there are two things I want to make clear at this point. First is that I am talking about construction projects. And the second is that there are two ways of misleading a client intentionally and unintentionally. Uh, the subject of my research is the second one. So the right title of this presentation would be how construction project planners unintentionally mislead their clients. You can see some information about me. Uh, it's not that interesting. It's not that important. So let's go further. The first thing that probably comes to anybody's mind when asked about the differences between construction and other types of projects that construction projects always delay. And it's true everywhere in the world, not only in your country. Here you can see some of the main causes for delays, some of the main risks that can be blamed for delays, if I can start it. Yes, uh, pandemics is my own contribution to the body of knowledge. Oh, when planners try to explain the discrepancies between their planned and actual project dates, they usually list these issues. And my question to them are that, how many projects have you got in your three decades of professional career without design changes? How many have you got without supply chain issues? How many do you have without change orders? And the answer usually is that none. So why did you think that this particular project of yours were flawless? Why did you forget to taking these issues into account? Why did you make an unrealistic plan. And here we are at the ultimate goal of this presentation, the reasons for making unrealistic plans. The reasons for making unrealistic plans are manifold, including the lack of adequate information about the project. And this is, by the way, the most important issue according to my experience. But planners usually are aware of that they do not have all the information. However, there is one thing that they usually forget, that there is a mathematical model behind every scheduling tool, and models have limitations. They simply cannot be used for creating a perfect um, digital twin. They cannot perfectly model the real project. When it is realized that a model is insufficient, is the task of the science to develop a better model. In the following, I'm going to examine some of the existing problems. I show their consequences to the temporary plan, and I am going to propose possible solutions for these problems. Here you can see one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight modeling issues I'm going to deal with. Let's start with the fact that very few things in this universe are deterministic and the duration of construction activities are definitely not amongst them. Uh, planners usually apply deterministic models. Uh, let's see the consequences of these models to the project duration. When planners define the duration of individual activities, they usually try to define the most probable duration. In a better uh, case, they have some historical databases 
and uh, use the averages of the historical data. However, activity durations are not deterministic. So according to the developers of program evaluation and review technique, they follow activities, follow the so-called beta distribution. Here I am going to point out to the main difference between deterministic and stochastic calculations. I'm using a very simple one-chain network to illustrate this. Here it is. We have 10 activities. Duration are the same. Relationships are the same. The project duration is 1000 days. If we accept that activities are stochastic, then according to PERT, we can define the optimistic and pessimistic duration for activities. Let's set the optimistic uh, durations to 50 days for all activities, which is very, very optimistic, and the pessimistic duration to 150 days, which is not that pessimistic. The distribution of the project duration can be seen here. The expected project duration is 1000 days. And this is the main difference. PERT tells us that the chance for finishing the project within 1000 days is 50%. But there is a 50% chance that the project will finish later. The project will delay. In case of uh, more critical path in a network or more path that can be that can candidate for being critical, the differences between the results of the stochastic and uh, the deterministic calculations are quite shocking. In the case of deterministic calculations, the project duration remains 1000 days. However, in case of stochastic calculations, in case of Monte Carlo simulations, the results show that the expected project duration is 1041 days and the chance that we can finish the project by the original deadline is 1000 days is around 0%. Here are the conclusions for this uh, section. Using deterministic models, the chance that we finish the project by the deadline is between 10-50%, depending on the number of parallel critical paths. If the distribution of the activities is non-symmetric, then this figure is much worse, and the chance that we can finish the project by the deadline is between 5 and 40%. Assuming that all activities are included into the network and all relationships are defined correctly. Possible solutions to avoid misleading your clients. Use stochastic models like PERT. Include activities into the deterministic networks to handle risks. This is critical chain method or simply do not use the most probably estimations for activity duration. The next issue that I'm going to deal with that construction activities are never ever linear. Here is an example to illustrate the effect of using the linear activity assumption on the project duration. I'm going to use a very simple example to illustrate the differences between um, linear and non-linear activity production assumptions. The project is consisting of three activities. The first activity goes ahead by 5 meters per hour, which means that we need 200 hours to finish this activity, let's say 20 days. Activity 2 is earthwork. The average depth 
of the trench is 2 meters, the width is 1 meter, the capacity of the excavator is excavator is 10 cubic meters per hour. So you can calculate that we need 200 hours uh, 20 days to finish this work. Safety distance between activity A and the earthwork is uh, 50 meters. Activity 3 is pipe laying and it goes ahead by 5 meters per hour. Safety distance is 50 meters. So you can see that the project takes 220 hours, that is 22 days to finish, and everything seems to be fine. However, there is one huge problem with this network, and I give you two seconds to figure it out. What can it be? Okay. I told you that, that the average depth is 2 meters, but at the start is only 1 meter and at the end is going to be 3 meters, which means that the production function of the earthwork looks like this, which means that I cannot start uh, at day 1. And it means that I cannot start pipeline at uh, 20 hours. So the project duration at the end will be uh, 245 meters instead of 220. It's more than 10% difference. Here you can see uh, the production functions for earthwork. The green one is uh, the linear assumption and the orange one is the assumption based on the geometry of the trench. And you can see that the largest difference is between the two production functions is 125 meters and 25 hours, which is quite big. You can follow the calculations here. The only interesting thing is that how I defined function G, which is the production function uh, based on the changing geometry. Under the menu, changing geometry, you can see three slides about how to calculate uh, production functions in case of nonlinear activities and one slide about the conclusions. I won't explain the calculations. We don't have time for this. You can stop this video whenever you want and devote as much time as you feel necessary to understand it. Here we are at the conclusions regarding nonlinear activities. Conclusion number one, changing geometry, the effect of learning and other issues can be the causes for nonlinear activities. Planners usually do not aware well of the effect of nonlinear activities on project duration. Number three, the use of linear assumption when activities are nonlinear adversely affect the project duration and mislead clients by creating unrealistic and non-executable plans. Possible solution for this problem? Uh, use models that can handle nonlinear activities or fragment activities. Relationships used by planners are almost always minimum relationships, which means that they define the minimum necessary time between activities. For example, a finish to start five days means that there should be at least minimum five days between the, predecessor, between the finish of the predecessor and the start of the successor. However, there are situations when we need something more.
here is the example. We've got three activities. The construction of a temporary shoring wall can start right after finishing the excavation. So there is a finish to start zero relationship from activity A to activity B. Shoring material is available one day after the removal of shoring at another site. So there is a finish to start zero relationship from activity C to activity B. There is a third technological constraint. The hole cannot stay without support for more than a day. What is the logic? Here is a possible solution. We've got finish to start zero from A to B and the finish to start one from C to B. Let's see the results. I'm going to illustrate it by using a gun chart. We've got earthwork. Shoring can start right after finishing the earthwork. But there is a third activity, activity C, which precedes activity B by a finish to start zero, a finish to start one relationship. So activity B can start one day after the finish of B. What is the problem with this logic? Both relationships has been satisfied. But there's a third one. The hole cannot stay without support for more than a day. How can we model this logic? Well, the solution is the application of maximal relationships. We can say that there should be, between A and B, there should be a finish to start zero minimal relationship, but this leg has a maximum value, which is one day. So the relationship is finished to start one, uh, finished to start zero and one. And one describes the maximum allowable time between A and B. In this case, because B cannot start earlier, the max finish to start one relationship will pull activity A within the range of one day. So here you can see the maximum relationships. The maximum start to start Z relationship tells us that maximum Z time can elapse between the start of the predecessor and the start of the successor. A max finish to start Z relationship tells us that maximum Z time can elapse between the finish of the predecessor and the start of the successor. A max finish to finish relationship between two activities tells us that maximum Z time can elapse between the finish of the predecessor and the finish of the successor. And last but not least, we have the maximum start to finish Z relationship, which means that maximum Z time can elapse between the finish of the successor and the start of the predecessor. Here we are at the conclusions regarding uh, maximal relationships. Without maximal relationships, the project logic is probably not complete, and this is important. Maximal relationships usually increase the project duration or leave it intact, but never decrease it. Please remember to the example where the Max finished to start one relationship pulled earthwork closer to shoring. And in this case, all the activities depending on earthwork will start later, which can increase the project duration.
Conclusion number three, you are misleading your client if you forget to include Maxima relationships. Possible solutions, use only those scheduling tools that can handle Maxima relationships, if there's any. The next issue I'm going to discuss is the need for point-to-point -point relationships. Point-to-point -point relationships are extremely useful in linear projects when activities are often overlapping. Here's a small example. We've got two activities, A, earthwork, B, pipelining. And the question is, how do you describe the situation that there should be at least one day safety distance between earthwork and pipe laying? Defining start to start one relationship between B and A seems to be a fine solution, but only for the first sight. Uh, if B is shorter, then from, that, from day five, we will put the pipe to a place where there is no trench below. Well, if start to start one is not a good solution, then what about to employ finish finish one between the two activities? Well, in this case, we are going to encounter the same problem as in the first case, uh, which you can see on the linear scheduling uh, chart. What about of employing start to start one and finish to finish one combination together? Well, I've got two comments regarding this. First, that, for example, Microsoft Project allows only one relationship between two activities. And my comment number two is that if we assume nonlinear activities, we're going to have the same spatial conflicts as we had before. What can we do if we want to manage these type of spatial conflicts during the execution of the project? Well, we can fragment the activities. We can divide the activities into segments. Uh, you can see that uh, finish to start zero relationships has uh, have been employed um, between the consecutive segments within the same activity, and also a finish to start zero relationship have been used between the similar segments of the different activities. So, for example. A, B, a finish to start one, a finish to start zero between B1 and A1 means that B1 can start right after finishing A1. In this case, in this case, we manage this situation with 20 activities and 30 relationships. Uh, what what can we do if uh, Continued, continuity of the activities are necessary. So splitting is not allowed. Well, in this case, we can use Maxima relationships. In the following slides, I will add Max finish to start zero relationships between consecutive segments, and you can follow their effects on the schedule by checking the changes on the linear scheduling chart. Here I started to add max finish to start zero relationships between the consecutive segments to make uh, activities being continuous. And you can see that during this process, the number of relationships are increasing. And you also can observe that activity B starts being continuous. There are no changes in activity A because it has no predecessors. Instead of using finish to start zero relationships between the similar segments of A and B, 
we can use the start start one and finish finish combination which in Hungary we denote with the CR abbreviation. To avoid fragmentation and the multiplication of the number of precedence relationships, we can use point-to-point -point relationships. A point-to-point -point relationship between two activities uh, is very easy to define. We have to define the points and we have to define the leg between the two points. Points can be defined as the elapsed time from the start of the activities or points can be defined as the work that must accomplish on each activities or the combination of the previous two cases. The solution of the previous problem with point-to-point -point relationship is simpler. We've got only two activities and one, two, three, four, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten relationships. Please note that traditional precedence relationships, start to start, finish to finish, start to finish, finish to start, are point to point relationships, which means that they can be transformed into point to point relationships. And please do not forget that maximal point to point relationships also exist. Conclusions regarding point to point relationships. Point-to-point -point relationships can be used to control internal points of activities. If activities are nonlinear, then real project duration is increasing, which means that you mislead your client by creating a shorter project duration if you only deal with the endpoints of the activities. Solution for modeling overlapping activities, where one is fragmentation, if the software doesn't handle point-to-point -point relationships. But in this case, in this later case, you may need maximum relationships as well to make activities being continuous. Or B, a software that can handle point-to-point -point relationships. Continuous relationships are new in project planning. Let's see the justification of using them. Modeling overlapping activities by fragmenting them results in um, lots of activities and lots of relationships. The use of point-to-point uh, -point relationships is more convenient but still results in too many relationships. Um, also, there is a theoretical problem with it, which is that we assume linear segments. However, if these segments are not linear, one can face the same spatial conflicts within the segments that they have faced before. To avoid spatial conflicts, we have to shorten the length of the sections to zero. That is, we have to control all the points of the connected activities. And this has led to the concept of continuous precedence relationships. The concept of continuous relationships is easy, as you will see soon. We've got continuous relationships uh, using uh, work lag or volume lag. And we have uh, continuous relationships using time lag. So for example, at least one day safety distance has to be kept at every location between the activities. And of course, the maximal versions of uh, continuous precedence relationships can also be defined. Hand calculations are um, bit awkward because all the relation all the continuous relationships have to be transformed into a point to point for example 
into a minima star start relationships and this is sometimes not easy i won't explain the calculation rules uh, you can read one of my papers about it without going into the details the lag of the transformed star to start z relationship uh, is equal to the minimal difference between a star and b b is the successor activity uh, supposing that they start at the same time here we are at the conclusions regarding continuous relationships well the main conclusion is that this is the only theoretical flawless solution to model overlapping activities unfortunately there is no commercial application that can handle this type of logic relationships with boolean logical switches the need this is going to be interesting let's see the example that justifies the use of it okay here is the example project i give you a couple of seconds to read it and to think about how to model this problem for example by using microsoft project you cannot model it with primovera but you can model it with microsoft project it's not easy and i won't tell you during this presentation this is an attempt by the way wrong attempt for modeling this issue activity t testing has three predecessors and according to them the earliest start of activity t is day 13 because all the predecessors have to be satisfied however we would like to start testing as soon as as possible logical switches can help to solve this problem here is the solution and by the way the only good solution to the problem or logical switches have to be assigned to the finish to start zero relationships and now the software will know that the minimum of the possible three dates has to be selected and this is going to be the start of activity T which is day 9 principles of the time analysis in case of uh, or relationships are quite simple we've got two different cases the first one you can see here in this case all the relationships all the or relationships have uh, the same successor in this case we have to select the minimal among the possible start and finish dates in all the different cases calculations are a bit more complex we have to produce each and every scenario in a different network and at the end we have to merge them together by adding a dummy start and a dummy finish old finish nodes are connected uh, to the dummy finish by uh, boolean or finish to start zero relationships in this enlarged network we have to perform a time analysis and the software gonna select the optimum solution that is the network with the smallest project duration conclusions regarding boolean type of logic uh, they are useful in modeling different scenarios in one network not using them doesn't mean that you mislead your client uh, it means that you cannot find you won't find the optimal solution application of uh, 
or type logic soon can lead to very big networks or to the repetition of the time analysis great many times on similar networks. So the speed of the time analysis is very, very important. And the last one that unfortunately there is no commercial application that can handle this type of logic. In the next, uh, I'm going to discuss the need for bidirectional relationships, which is a very, very interesting topic. Please read the following problem. The same machine is necessary for executing two different activities. Activities are independent, but only one machine is available for both of them which makes parallel execution impossible. The order of execution is immat immaterial, however, the project must be finished as soon as possible. Here is the example project. We have uh, two streets, three activities to execute uh, on each street, earthwork, pipe laying and backfill, one day safety distance has to be kept between these activities within a street and the duration of the activities can be seen at the table below. The only complication is that we have one team for earthwork, one team for pipe laying and one team for backfill. So what is the logic in this situation? and uh, what is the project duration. Here is a possible solution to the project. As you can see, I've handled safety distances by using uh, continuous relationships. And regarding the resource limitations, I simply added finish to start zero relationships. And the sequence of the streets is that first we start to work on street one and then we go to street two. You can see the linear schedule, uh, the linear scheduling representation of the project and the project duration is 13 days. However, there is uh, another possibility that we start to work on street two and then we go to street one. You can see the network modeling on the right side of this uh, problem, of this scenario. And in this case, the project duration will be 11 days, so two days shorter. In case of more streets, we've got much more scenarios to check. And the bidirectional relationships can solve this problem. A bidirectional relationship, uh, for example, between A1 and A2 means that either A1 follows A2 or A2 follows A1. In case of three activities, three relationships are needed. In case of four activities, six relationships are needed. If we assume that there is only one team to execute these activities. Bidirectional relationships can be converted uh, into two O relationships. So either C follows D or D follows C. So they can be converted into O relationships and they can be handled according to this. Conclusions regarding bidirectional logic are pretty much the same. Uh, as uh, the conclusions in case of uh, or types of logic because bidirectional logic can be converted into boolean or type of logic. The tools that are used for project planning are based on precedence diagramming method in almost 100%. Precedence diagramming method assumes activities with fixed duration that is, activities in precedence diagramming method are non-splitable and non-stretchable. 
However, in construction industry, almost all activities are stretchable and splitable. In this section, we are going to examine the effect of stretchable activities on the project duration. You are already familiar with the sample project. There are three activities, earthwork, pipe laying and backfill. The safety distance in this case is two weeks uh, between the consecutive activities. The duration of the project is uh, 10 days, as you can see it on the linear scheduled representation of the project. If you observe, if you observe activity B, then you can see that slowing down activity B from four to five days has a positive impact in the project duration. The project duration will decrease to nine from 10 days. How can we tell to the model? How can we tell to the scheduling tool to slow down activities if they have positive impact on the project duration? Well, making activities stretchable is the right answer to this question. The principles of the time analysis in case of uh, stretchable activities are pretty much the same as in the case of fixed activity duration with one small difference. I won't explain it. It would take a couple of minutes. If you are interested in, please stop the video and read this slide and this one for the backward calculations. And here are the conclusions regarding stretchable activities. Please read them. Making activities being stretchable can help to shorten the project duration by slowing down some, activity, some of the activities. Stretchable activities are also useful in detecting uh, non-complete logic. Here I mean start and finish Denver activities. Not using them will result in longer project duration and increased cost. Unfortunately, there is no commercial application that can handle this type of logic. I more or less have finished my presentation, so I start to conclude it in four sections. Let's start with the classification of relationships. You already have probably realized that during my presentation I have defined a completely new set for precedence relationships. Here is the classification scheme for these new precedence relationships and according to it a precedence relationship can be single directional or bidirectional. It can has and or or logical switch. It is minimal or maximal. A relationship can be point-to-point -point or continuous relationship. And the leg can be time or work leg. So for example, the traditional precedence relationship, the start-to-start -start relationship is a single relationship and end with an end uh, logical switch. It's minimal, it's point to point, by the way, it's end point relationship, and the lag is time lag. There are, if I remember well, 24 different paths in this graph, which means that 24 different uh, relationships can be defined by using this classification scheme. Here is the algorithm that we use for all these new types of precedence relationships and for nonlinear and, uh, and stretchable activities. I don't want to discuss it. Uh, you can stop the video and spend as many time as you need to understand it. I want to introduce you the concept of influence lines. 
influence line of an activity tells us how the project duration will change for the changes of that specific activity duration. In this case, we've got activity Y, five days, and the project duration is 11 days. Changing the activity duration from five to four and three, we leave the project duration intact. After that, the project duration will increase. Increasing the activity duration from five to six days, we leave the project duration intact. After that, the project duration will increase again. So you can see that uh, influence line are useful tools uh, for crashing the project duration. And here we are at the final conclusions. So the conclusions are that planners usually make unrealistic plans and unintentionally mislead their clients. The chance to accomplish the plans without delays is between 5-30%. The possible solution to remedy this issue, make more realistic executable plans, deal with uncertainties, Use nonlinear and stretchable activities in the model if activities of the project are nonlinear and stretchable. Make as many as possible points of the activities be controllable by including point to point or continuous relationships. And optimize your plan by including more scenarios into the same plan by using boolean logic and bidirectional relationships if you have questions you can ask me in the chat room and thank you for staying with me bye